بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده على من لا نبي بعده ولا كتاب بعد كتابه ولا شريعة بعد شريعته أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رب صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم جزا الله عنا نبينا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم بما هو أهله مصر سبكتد أن رب العلماء الكرام وفازغ دي قرآن برد زنالدز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم has highlighted to the ummah the sanctity of the life of a believer we all know that if a person has to wrongfully take the life of a fellow human being especially a Muslim then the penal law is that of qisas an nafsu bin nafs that life for life. Similarly, we understand the sanctity that has been highlighted regarding the wealth, the assets, the belongings of a Muslim. That if a person has to steal beyond a certain value, then the perpetrator, that person who had stolen the wealth of another Muslim, then his hands has to be his hand has to be cut off. And in a similar vein, Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has highlighted to the ummah the sanctity of even the emotional being of every person around us. That how do we deal with fellow human beings? How do I speak? How do I interact? Remember to open up a business is very easy. Any person, you give him money, he'll start a business. Very few are successful in running that business. Ensuring that it is successful, you are able to pay the bills, meet the requirements, the needs of society or of that business you are doing and run that business over the years across all challenges. That's the acumen that's required. So every one of us to do amal, to perform salah, it's relatively easy to do ibadah, to take out a tasbih. It's relatively very easy. Tahajjud salah, tilawat of Quran. But the intelligence of a believer and the test is the hifaza and the protection of that amal. Because this morning maybe we woke up for tahajjud and we read a lot of tahajjud, long rakats. But if we woke up in the morning and we made a ghibat of someone, Perhaps that's going to be credited to someone else. You read your tahajjud, but he's getting the reward. Maybe we're giving a lot of sadaqah, building masajid. But because I said something to hurt the feelings of a Muslim brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give all that reward away on the day of qiyamah. So the hifaza and the protection, even when it comes to the emotional being of people around us, in the time of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Zaid bin Sa'na, he was a Jewish rabbi, learned person, well known. He had mentioned that, مَا مِنْ عَلَامَاتِ النُّبُوَ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا وَقَدْ عَرَفْتُهَا فِي وَجِهِ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِلَّا ثْنَتَيْنِ He says if you speak about all of those signs, those tokens, that are indicative of the nubuwat of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I've seen it all on the life of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every sign to prove the authenticity of the nubuwat that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is khatamun nabiyin. I've seen it. Except two qualities. I haven't put Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the acid test regarding two. Number one is we've read in the scriptures, Zaid bin Sana is saying, يَسْبِقُوا حِلْمُهُ جَهْلَهُ وَلَا يَزِيدُهُ شِدَّةُ الْجَهْلِ عَلِهِ إِلَّا حِلْمًا 
that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's tolerance overshadows, outplays his ignorance. And in the face of ignorance, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only increases in tolerance. The more ignorant you are to him, the more tolerant he is to you. And he realized the only way I can test these two qualities is by me rubbing shoulders and being extremely close with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he's, he's realized that the only way to put Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the acid test, that will these two qualities shine in the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have to become very close to him. So he found an opportunity to be very close to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one day in the companionship of Sahaba radiallahu anhum, early days in Makkah, Mukarramah, a Bedouin comes and he says, Ya Muhammad, Ya Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he speaks about the poverty of the people back in his area. He says, we, the people of our locality, we became Muslim. We were under this impression, if we become Muslim, Allah will bless us with even the wealth of this world. But unfortunately, a time has come, it's really rough and tough. People of the locality, they're facing the other end of the stick. It's poverty, it's difficult, it's trying times. Ya Rasulullah, please, if you could extend a helping hand, maybe I could take some things to distribute amongst the people, only for the protection and hifazat of the iman. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looks around. The person next to him is Umar radiallahu anhu. Nabi Sallam looks at him to find out is there anything in the treasury. He says, Ma baqiya minhu shay. Ya Rasulullah, nothing left. Sahaba radiallahu anhu said, we could see the worry on the face of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Sallam was worried and concerned that what if these people become murtad for a handout? Just for a handout, what if they became murtad and they leave the deen of Islam? And we have to have the same worry and concern. How do I see to the well-being of every person around me? So this Jewish person, Zaid bin Sana, he saw an opportunity. He says, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is financially in need. He requires some assistance. So he tells Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm ready to forward the cash. You will pay me in exchange of kajur future dates. There were a few loose ends. Nabi Sam tied it up. And he says for this to be legally permissible shar'an according to the sharia. Listen, let's do a few amendments. It was made to the contract. The Jewish person is happy. Zaid bin Sana. He forwards the cash to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Sam is not taking a loan for... You know, for cash flow. He's not taking a loan for personal gain, not to upgrade his life. Nabi Sam is taking a loan for the well-being of people around in society. It's only for that. So the cash is forwarded. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives it. This person takes it, distributes it amongst the people of his locality. And just a few days are left. Just a few days are left for payment dates, for due dates. Zaid bin Sana found the opportunity that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hasn't paid me. Money is not even available. How is he going to pay me? And the kajur is not ready. So he comes to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Zaid bin Sana himself says, فَأَخَذْتُ بِمَجَامِعِ قَمِيسِهِ We will say he gripped Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he shook him. He says, Ya Muhammad, Ala taqdini haqqi? Will you not pay me my Jew and my right? Umar radiallahu anhu was next to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zaid bin Sana says, the moment I did this, and I gripped Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I shook Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, will you not pay me? I saw Umar radiallahu anhu, وَعَيْنَاهُ تَدُورَانِ فِي وَجْهِهِ كَالْفَلَكِ الْمُسْتَدِيرِ his eyeballs were orbiting in his socket, blood, bloodshot red, like he just wants to kill me. He says, Zaid, had it not been for a fear, I would have killed you and made you have forgotten yesterday. But Nabi Sam is here. I'll collect myself. That's all he said. Had it not been for a fear that I carry, 
Maybe someone will get upset with me. I would have killed you. You would have been a forgotten yesterday. Nabi Sam says, O oh Umar, O oh Umar, Inna kunna ahwaj ila ghairi hadha mink. Umar, amazing. We were deserving of better retaliation and response than that from you. Why not tell me, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulallah, let's pay him his dues. Why not say, O oh Zaid, let's discuss it amicably. Why not speak politely? Nabi Sam says, O oh Umar, due date come. The amount of kajur that we need to pay him, go and pay him the due. And O oh Umar, you will pay him 20 sa extra. <laughs> Approximately 80 kilos of kajur, give him extra. Nabi Sam, Umar, radiallahu ya Rasulallah, extra, makana ma ru'tahu bihi. Because of the exchange of words you had with him, you just emotionally killed him. You pay him extra. Nabi Umar radiallahu anhu goes, Zaid, I have to pay you. So he follows him, takes him, goes into the place where he has to weigh the kajur, and he gives him his due. This is what you're due for. And then he says, Oh Zaid, now this is Islah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam making the Islam of Umar radiallahu anhu. I could have gotten anyone amongst the galaxy of Sahaba radiallahu anhu to pay him the extra. But O oh Umar, now you have to buy that bitter pill. You have to say ma for what we did. You have to say I'm sorry about it. But not just in words, in action. We want to see the sunnah in play. Now you give him 20 sa, 80 kajurus extra. So he gives Zaid, this is extra. Nabi Sam says, I must give you extra. Please forgive me because of the way I spoke to you. This is extra. How I spoke to you, I'm not supposed to speak like that. Imagine, forget about 13 check and bonuses. Every day we would be liable to give bonuses to our employees. Allah forgive the way we speak. And sometimes what do we say? That's the only language they understand. Yeah, Nabi Sallallahu is not talking about a Muslim employee. Not an employee. A person who came to forward a loan. That's all. Nabi Sallallahu is saying, you go and pay him extra. When that was given to Zaid, Zaid addresses Umar. He says, oh Umar, atarifuni? You know me? He says, no, I'm blank. Who are you? He says, I'm Zaid. I'm Zaid. He says, al-hibr. You, you that, you the rabbi amongst the Jews, you the so important personality. So he says, yes, it's me. He says, Zaid, why did you do that to my Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Zaid says, O oh Umar, every sign of nubuwat, I saw it in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we had to put him to the test for two. I wanted to test the tolerance of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It wasn't a transaction. I was seeking the truth of Islam, not in words, in action. I have seen it, O oh Umar. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a personality and embodiment of qualities. Radi tu billahi rabba, wa bil Islam idina, wa bi Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a nabiya. O oh Umar, can you take me? I want to embrace the deen of Islam. He comes to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, becomes a Muslim. O oh Ummati Muslima, brothers and elders, friends, Perhaps many a times, that occasion when we are getting upset, perhaps it's the occasion someone is seeking and looking and searching for Islam. But maybe he's testing you to see whether holistically you believe in your deen or not. Or is it just reduced to certain traditions, verses and literature? He wants to see it. Is it a living Religion that you have, that you deep down believe and you act and you walk the talk, that's what they want to see. Maybe you're at a restaurant and the way you respond to someone who brings that food late. Maybe someone comes to deal in your shop and he brings some commodity back and he wants to exchange or whatever be the case. He may be rude, he may be harsh, but maybe he wants to see whether you are a true believer. He wants to see, are you a personality of quality? Do you have sifat? So therefore we need to realize, every one of us, we are ambassadors of the deen of Islam in every facet of life. 
Whether I'm walking, whether I'm talking, even if I be transacting in my business, perhaps the person on the other end is testing me and he's seeking Islam. So we need to deal, transact, speak according to the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. See, there's two things, one we know about. We call it IQ, intelligence, the intelligent quantum, we know that. The person's intelligence, how much it is rated, we know about that. But there is something that is called EQ, emotional quotient. The EQ, emotional being of a person. That is why in society we look around. Many a person is smart. If you take his report, maybe he aced it and he's got seven A's. Maybe he's the most smartest person in the room. He may be comprising of 1% of a people in a fraternity. But his EQ may be very low. He doesn't know how to deal. He doesn't know how to enter, integrate in society. He snaps very quickly. He doesn't know how to respond to situations. Now that's important for every one of us. That the IQ of a person, that's the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the EQ of a person, you can determine. You interact with someone, you can see from where he's coming, whether he's a personality of negativity. Some people are just negative to every situation. You put anything to them, they're negative. And some people are just positive in the worst of situations. They realize that there's an opportunity even in a negative situation. And every person is different. And sometimes a child's IQ may be low, but because of the way the teacher is disseminating that love, that care, that kindness, that child excels. And sometimes the IQ can be high. The child may be smart, but he won't excel in class because of, because of the sentiments that were said to him. One day he missed his homework. You fit for nothing. Now that will hurt him. I'm fit for nothing. Why did the teacher say that to me? And that's haunting him. Sometimes that one statement, how far reaching are the effects, we might not realize except down the line. Nabi Kareem wasallam was very, very particular about the emotional being of everyone in society. Don't say anything to hurt the feelings of people around. We're not talking about an ordinary Muslim. We're not talking about a Hazrat and a Sheikh or a very pious person. In the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one lady committed zina. Comes to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Qad zanit. I'm an adulteress. We some turns around, eventually, long story cut short, she admits, she accepts guilt, that yes, I had succumbed to desires, and I did something wrong. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam eventually says, that we, you are a married lady, therefore we have to stone you to death. So Nabi Salazam prepared the area, she was stoned to death. As she is being stoned to death, then one drop of blood falls on the temples of Khalid radiallahu anhu, Saif Allah, the sword of Allah. When that happened, he said certain words that were not becoming of his stature of the personality he is. He said something in disgust, like the blood of an adulteress on my face, and he wiped it off like, sis, her blood. Nabi Islam said, Mahlan ya Khalid. Oh Khalid, hold on. What are you saying? How do you say that? Do you know, oh Khalid, this girl, this lady who committed zina, she committed zina. tawbatan. She made such a tawba. Any person who commits the most heinous, gravest, and most guna kabira of the world, if he makes her tawba, Allah will accept it. This is the tawba of this lady. Be careful what you say regarding people around you in society. Now we're taking her to perform the salatul janaza. Umar radiallahu anhu didn't know what happened. At that situation, he was not of a, he was not familiar. So he comes to Nabi he says, Ya Rasulullah, Atu Salih Aliha, Ya Rasulullah, you Khatamun Nabiin, the purest of the creation of Allah, 
And now you're going to perform Salatul Janazah for this lady who committed zina. I mean, shouldn't we say like, no Salatul Janazah and let someone else perform? Nabi Sam said, oh Umar, laqad ta'bat tawbatan, she made such tawbah. لَوْ قُسِمَتْ بَيْنَ سَبْعِينَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ لَوَسِعَتْهُمْ If her tawbah is distributed, not 70 people, 70 households of Medina Tayyibah, sufficient for them. Yet she committed zina. We have to hold our tongues and be careful what we say regarding who we say in it. Be careful of our thoughts regarding people around. If that person comes for salah, if that person is a beholder of the kalima, he's a reciter of the kalima, be careful what we say. One of the pious said, he said, the only time you can have guarantee over yourself when you receive your books of deeds in your right hand and you already passed the sirat. Then you can have judgment regarding others. Until then, hold your tongue. You've got no guarantee. As long as you, bleed, you are breathing, Anything can happen. Tables can change. You can be on the other side of the game. You're looking down at someone else who's committed zina. You're looking at someone else who has committed some sin. Yes, it's a sin in the sharia. But you looking down perhaps is a greater sin. And Allah will not appreciate that. Hatim al-Asam. Now look at the bias. Hatim al-Asam was a great muhaddith. A scholar of note. One day one lady comes in the gathering and she says, Oh Hatim, I have a question to pose. So Hatim says, no problem, what's your question? Perhaps she was suffering from flatulence, excess wind, whatever be the case. She let out some gas and wind and with a sound also. There was a loud sound to it. As some people may say that some are loud and violent. So it was something that was heard. So everyone started laughing in the gathering. They're all laughing. So when as they were laughing, Hatim said, Excuse me, lady. Please forgive me. I'm hard of hearing. I cannot hear too well. Repeat yourself. You said something. He said, Alhamdulillah. That means Hazrat never hear. Hazrat never heard. I'm not disgraced as yet. Only the people know about it. You see, Hazrat, I got a question. Gigi, speak louder. She spoke loudly, she got her answer, and she went away. After that day, Al-Asam means someone who is deaf. This great muhaddis Hatim became better known as Hatim Al-Asam, the muhaddis who pretended to be deaf to save the feelings of an ummati. This quality was given to him. He pretended like he was deaf just to save the feelings of someone in society. Subhanallah. Mullah Hussein Azgar, Mullah Azgar Hussein Rahimullah, a senior Ustad of Darulum Dioband. En route to his house, there used to be a Zania, a prostitute, a very loose lady. Very loose lady. She was known on that street. Every day when Mullah Azgar Hussein Rahimullah used to pass that route, He'll stop at a certain distance, take out his shoes, hold it in his hands, and very silently tiptoe across a certain area, put his shoes on and continue. After some time, someone mustered up the courage. You see, Hazrat, I want to ask you one question. He says, no problem, what's the question? I said, you got shoes, but I noticed in a certain distance of your route, you take out your shoes, you walk bare feet, then you put it on again, and you continue on your journey. What's the reason, the background, what's this all about? Mulana Rahimullah explained, he says, see, en route to go home, there's no other way besides this one road. That one house, there's a prostitute and a very loose lady who sells herself, she stays there. She's gone so old, she doesn't get any clients. So late in the night after my sabak, I'm going home. I'm worried and concerned if she hears my footsteps, it may just put her hopes up, maybe there's a customer tonight. <laughs> so just to avoid her hopes flying high, I tiptoe across and go home. Imagine being worried and concerned 
of the feelings of a lady who is a prostitute, who is a loose lady. How much more worried and concerned we have to be of people around us in society, of sharing information, messages that are blasphemous, that are running someone down, sometimes not ordinary people, sometimes people who are the friends of Allah. And who's the friend of Allah? Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu. Anyone who has brought iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've extended friendship to you. You are my friend. You've got iman. You are my friend. Every believer is the friend of Allah. We have to be careful how we speak, what we say, our exchange of words, messages regarding people. And this is the hifazat of our amal. One day, Safiya radiallahu anha, her camel had taken ill, was unable to move on on the journey. Zainab radiallahu anha had an extra conveyance. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Oh Zainab, you've got an extra conveyance. Can you please borrow and lend that one to Safiya? Zainab radiallahu anha says, Ana u'ti tilka al-Yahudiya? Must I give that to that Jewish, that Jewish girl? Nabi Sallallahu was so upset, so upset. He didn't speak to Zainab radiallahu for a few days. Very upset with her. He says, oh Zainab, you're my wife and that's how you speak. That's not becoming, not behoving. Forget about just an ordinary believer. You are min ummahatil mu'mineen. So we have to be very careful. We as the ummah of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how we carry out ourselves, absolutely cautious, very cautious. The people that work around us, the people we work with, remember they say, a boss carries a title and a leader has the people. A lot of people are bosses in the world. Very few are leaders who have people eating out of their hands to say, this man, I love him. He just knows how to interact and to deal with people. One of the pious he was diabetic, sickly. Someone came to him, one of his murids, his lovers, and he brings a plate of mitai. He says, Hazrat, this year is for you. Subhanallah, he waited a little while to see what's Hazrat's reaction like. Does Hazrat like this mitai or not? Sweet meats. So Hazrat opened, he's diabetic. So not supposed to be having it. Hazrat opened the box, cut one piece and he ate it. Subhanallah. So sweet, so nice. Took another one. The person is waiting now. Like, Hazrat, taste everything. He took one more piece. He says, please, I need the recipe now. I need the recipe. So the person was so happy and elated. You see, Hazrat appreciated my gift. Mulana appreciated. He went home. The family said, Mulana, he enjoyed it. He says, you know how happy Mulana was? He said, buy another, buy another lot and take it next week. So when the next lot and box came home, then Hazrat's wife is saying, but you're diabetic, what's happening over here? Why are you just accepting? He says, forget about the sweet meats. I'm worried about putting sweetness to his heart. I don't want to break his feelings to say I am diabetic. He brought something, let me say, Alhamdulillah, Allah accept your sacrifice, your efforts, you brought something for me. Allah forgive, sometimes in society, real case that happened. Daughter-in-law brought something. It's a worldwide pandemic. Allah gives shifa. So daughter-in-law brought something. She presented it. And the mother-in-law made sure everything else was on the table besides that. That didn't go. At the end of the function, when they were clearing up, mother-in-law opened up. She said, oh, oh I really forgot. Serious maf man. But you know, this one is very rich. Daddy don't like rich things. But you know what? I haven't given anything to the Kamwari today. I'll give her your things. Allahu Akbar. So much of time through that recipe, garnishing it. And just like that, you break my heart. Now when the son wants to go, daughter says, you go on your own. Oh, why you never come with the wife? I don't know, she's busy. Excuses. You just broke someone's heart. You wanted to come back and be normal and smile? We have to be careful. Someone apply some itar. Subhanallah, it's so lovely. Maybe he'll give you the whole thing for free also. But it's about controlling the feelings of someone, making someone happy. One great ibadat is making people happy in society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us 
the tawfiq and the ability we be cautious we be conscious of the feel the feelings of people around not hurt the feelings of people around us in society let's make dua for our akhlaq the akhlaq of the entire ummah of nabiya kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam and dua for the goodness the well being of the entire ummah of nabiya sallallahu alaihi wasallam wherever the ummah is suffering around the world may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate remove the def- the difficulties the sufferings of the entire ummah of nabiya sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahirabbil alamin subhanallahi wa bihamdihi